Uh, last Monday, about nine o'clock, I came to this house uh, to perform some repairs. Uh, ever since the city kicked out all the homeless people that were occupying the hotels on I-55, uh, there's just been, it's been like a plague of locusts. We've had so much crime, they've relocated into this neighborhood. And uh, probably before that day, I'd had about six different neighbors call me at various times to say there were people in the yard attempting to break in, had broken in, had just left, uh, and they have just caused such immense damage. Prior to that, in this building, there was really not much more than just some old files, boxes of files, some old furniture, uh, things that had value, but more sentimental value. Um, there wasn't anything like power tools so much. Uh, the most valuable thing was materials, construction materials that are going to be used in this repair. Things like ceiling fans. Day by day, all that stuff has been ransacked and taken away. And when I got here on that Monday to do some work, uh, I noticed over a window that had previously broken that I haven't even had time to fix yet, they placed a flag. It's right there, a Welsh flag that I actually purchased when I was backpacking in Europe. Uh, seeing that, I knew somebody was here because I had just gone to Home Depot, and like I said, it had, it had only been an hour or so. I immediately got my pistol out of my truck, which I normally keep there, and looked in the window. Before I went in the door, I announced myself and asked, anybody here? Hello? Hello? There was no sound. At that point, uh, I entered the building, looked around looked up through the attic cross uh, opening, had seen nothing, and I bent down to disassemble the makeshift ladder they had made. That ladder was obviously right under the access to the attic, and as I bent down and was facing down, I heard the ominous sound of metal striking metal. In that moment, I knew exactly where that person was, where I was, and that there was nothing to hide behind between us. I immediately stood up, stepped back, drew my pistol, and saw a man who was holding a weapon. I later learned that that weapon was a police issue, expandable baton, commonly called an ASP. I fired my gun four times and struck that man four times and immediately exited the building. After that, I heard another voice. It was the voice of a woman, so I realized there was more than one person in this attic. I called to them, I told them to come down, and the woman came down first. When she came down, I asked her a series of questions, and she gave me amazing information. These aren't just vagabonds or squatters. This is an organized cartel of property thieves, identity thieves, copper thieves. They have numerous streams of income. I have much information that I will willingly share with any crime fighting organization, but the Jackson Police Department is not it. When the police came, the investigation was headed by a detective of robbery homicide who claimed to have been a detective for the last 11 years. At this point, I still don't know his name, but when they performed their crime scene investigation, they didn't come to the crime scene. They stood out in the driveway, yellow taped off both front yards, and looked for a long time on the ground for shell casings. Despite the fact that I told the officers and handed the officers my revolver. The detective interviewed the two trespassers right there in the front yard. They were not handcuffed, they were not bound, they were standing just like any, you and me. However, when the detective asked to interview me, I asked that we go to the crime scene so I could show exactly what happened. He refused. Instead, we went downtown. I gave my statement, and immediately after giving my statement, was transported to Raymond Detention Facility. During the course of all this, I asked the detective, what is a lawful citizen supposed to do? He told me I'd made four mistakes. Number one, I, had no I did not have a no trespassing sign on this property, and therefore there was no reasonable way 
for a trespasser to know that he couldn't break into my house. Secondly, he said that a police expandable baton is not a weapon. Third, he said <clears throat> that I had no right to self-defense because I had a duty to retreat. Lastly, he said the castle doctrine did not apply because this is not my full-time residence. I'm a lawyer in the state of Mississippi. I got into law school on my first try. I passed the bar on my first try. But yet, here's a man who's had 11 years leading robbery homicide in Jackson, Mississippi, who does not understand the laws of the state of Mississippi. I am in a situation where I feel like I have fallen down the rabbit hole. I have no idea what is going on in the city. And it is clear that this administration does not care.